Just a good time. Just a good time, baby. Today we are going to be discussing whether or not Dino makes his third all-time team. We have a player who has never gotten a shot because of one letter in his name. I also will let you know how we can get a player who has never played in a regular season game make this list. And a 23-year NHL career finally pays off. All that and more here at the Lunchroom Syndicate at the Jack Table. Yes, welcome everyone. I am Christopher and I am here with Jay as we are talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning all-time team in our series of NHL all-time teams. <laughs> Correct. First up is picking our face of the franchise. Zunk, who are you nominating? I'm going to go with the man who's played 1,037 games for the Tampa Bay Lightning and helped bring them their first cup, Vincent LeCavalier. Oh, Man, that is not the name I thought you were going to go with because we have defensemen that we can take into a, account here. There's a right winger that comes up here, and we have a couple centers. I thought you were going to go with Steven Stamkos, but seeing that you didn't, let's get into why you picked the wrong guy. <laughs> uh but Stamkos over a point per game. Before this season started, just a couple points behind him, less than 10 points behind him. At this point of the season, he probably has passed him. LeClavier had how many cups? One. How many does Stamkos have? Two. How many Stanley Cup victories was Steven Stamkos the captain for? I choose not to say. That would be two. <laughs> how many was Vincent LeClavier captain for? One. How no, many Kobe zero. He got stripped of his captaincy, and it was given to Dave Anderchuk. Dave ah. Anderchuk led that team. Dave Anderchuk was the first Tampa Bay Lightning to raise a Stanley Cup. How much of a difference did Steven Stamkos make in those two runs compared to Vinny Cavier's one? And matter of fact, in the first cup, Steven Stamkos only played about three minutes. That's that's a fair point there also, but I don't have anything to go against it. <laughs> Boom! I was much more prepared to argue for Vincent LeClavier here, and it's, it's showing in the argument. Uh, point here goes to Zunk. He's going to win this one. Vincent LeClavier, the face of the franchise for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Both of our face of the franchises were here in the center spot as it is and we have some really interesting and good choices here so i'm looking forward to it yeah we have brian bradley chris Braden, tyler johnson vincent leclavier Braden point vaklov prospel brad richards steven stamkos brian bradley it was the best player during those bad years I have a hard time coming up with the reason why he should not be part of this list. Um, Chris Gratton, as of someone that's more uh, inclined to maybe mix it up, he did have a good amount of points, and that is uh, nothing to sniff at. One of my favorite things with him, a very underappreciated skill, is face-offs. He, he is out there against great players all the time. I think Tyler Johnson's the guy you want as your – is a really, really good third-line guy, third-line center, and maybe uh, who can play second line. Uh, Vinny Clavier, we already talked about it. I don't think we need to spend more time unless you got something else on him. Braden Point is going to be the next superstar of Tampa. He can take over games. He's taken over two different cup runs. He's arguably their best player in both finals runs. Vaklav Prospel is the next name. He's somebody who came through. He had really good impacts in the playoffs. Somebody that you probably had to be a fan of the team to know Vaclav Prospel to really appreciate him. Well, what do you got on Brad Richards? Oh, Brad Richards. Man, what a great player. It's hard to pop somebody in the immediacy like, yeah, we're taking this guy if he's not even the number one guy on his team. Um, that's, a, that, that's a little bit different when we're talking Vincent LeClavier and Brad Richards. 
Brad Richards was the more skilled of the two players. Has had an absolute rocket from the point when they put him back there on the power play. Brad Richards, for me, is an immediate pick. Is that the Conn Smythe he's holding there? That is a Conn Smythe he's okay. holding there. Stamkos, again, we already talked about him. And now we have to choose between the next superstar for the Tampa Bay Lightning or the first star of the Tampa Bay Lightning. I, I, I feel like Ryan Bradley playing on the bad Tampa teams, uh, expansion era Tampa teams, putting up that kind of numbers. Four centers for the Tampa Bay Lightning are Vinny LeClavier, Steven Stamkos, Brad Richards, and Brian Bradley. Here on the left wing, we have Dave Anderchuk, Ruslan Fedotenko, Yanni Gord, Alex Kalorn. Frederick Modine, Andre Klotz, Corey Stillman, and Rob Zamuner. Uh, Dave Anderchuk, a 23-year NHL veteran, finally getting the Stanley Cup captain of that Stanley Cup team. I remember that moment when he looked the cup up. Those moments are what sports are all about. Yeah. Ruslan Fedotenko. I remember him scoring some playoff goals, some game-winning goals, and a yes. few of them that year. Damn it, when I see it, I like it. I remember being feisty. He could score with – I mean, he, could, he was a playoff scorer, man. Uh, what, what more do you want? Because Yanni Gord is not going to be a blue caliber for me. A really good player for them, but a depth player. And mm -hmm. when you have really good depth players – you win President's Trophies and Stanley Cups, and Tampa Bay has done that. And then next we have Alex Killorn, and I just want to rewind the audio and just play it again here because I have nothing new to add to Alex Killorn that we didn't say about Yanni Gord. Because of how weak this core is, I put him in gray since he had the games played, but he's probably on the weaker side of gray. Next up is Frederick Modine. It's the same guy, uh, just a step above Yanni Gord, but a name I don't want to see when we're talking all-time teams. Very similar. The, the last three have been, and you can, and you really, you can add the fourth in here, uh, Andre Pilat. Oh, my um, God. I, I would, I'm so bored with this right now. Of the four we've mentioned, I think Andre Pilat's the best in terms of talent. Yeah, Andre Pilat's probably above the last three. However, let's, let's take another look at this and why – I think he needs to stay white. He was available in the Seattle draft, the expansion draft. Who did the Kraken go for? He wasn't good enough to get picked over Yanni Gord. I, I can't take him over the other players. Seattle made up our mind for us. Corey, Corey Stillman. Yeah. You look I, confused. I, I am a slightly confused, but I, I'm confused because he only has 81 games played. Signed as a free agent with Tampa Bay. He was on Tampa Bay's first Stanley Cup victory team. Has career high 80 points in 81 games. They didn't even offer him a contract extension. He doesn't make it, but he's just a fascinating player for me in Tampa Bay. So I wanted to throw him on here to talk about him, but it's just, it's such a head scratcher for me. Like what, what could this guy have done? to earn a spot on, on your team. Rob Zaminer is another one of the earlier guys in Tampa Bay. It is nice to show some love to the early era. Uh, I, would, I, I would put him in the gray category. Really liberal handing out medium grades with this. Now we have three spots and we have four players. It, it was the timely goals in the playoffs that puts Ruslan Fedotenko number two on here for me. I'm probably at Killorn for the next one. When, when we're, we're kind of splitting hairs with the three, and you have to find something that separates them, and he's got quite a bit more games played. Down to Frederick Modine. He had more points than Rob Zaminer. I can't split between these two. It's just... just for the more representation, because they're neither one's a great pick, I'm going to go with Rob the Mooner. So at our left-wing side, we are at Dave Anderchuk. Ruslan Fedotenko, Alex Kilorn, Rob Zaminer. Cleared up. Let's go to left B. We are looking at Mark Bergevin, Eric Brewer, hmm. Braden Coburn, Roman Hammerlick, Victor Hedman, Philip Kuba, Jay Beach, Jay Leach, <laughs> Ryan McDonough, 
Mikhail Sergachev, Mark Bergevin. I don't think he's necessarily a guy I think of right away for Tampa Bay. He's he's Stan White for me. Eric Brewer on the other half hand, I'm probably moving up to Gray. Just one of those tough, gritty, stay-at-home defenseman types. If they don't get as much uh, credit as they deserve. Uh, Braden Coburn, tough some bitch there. He didn't, didn't have the, the penalty minutes to go with somebody uh, who's as tough as he is. Um, probably stand white with him also. Um, but I do like him. He, he Just a little uh, little slow afoot for me. Romer, Roman the hammer hammer lick. Remember him being a bit of a hitter. A really good defenseman, though. I feel like he's great. We talked about a potential D-man being the face of the franchise. It is Victor Hedman with his 816 games, 114 goals, 404 assists, 588 penalty minutes. The dude plays at both ends of the ice. He is one of the best defensemen in the league, and he is, he's been that way for quite some years in the NHL. Um, he, he is a solid blue. Look, Kuba, not a lot of games played. A uh, name that is familiar to me, but I don't have a lot on him, honestly. I am a Philip Kuba fan. Just not here on the Tampa Bay squad. Yeah, white. And then we have the guy who is one letter in his name away from being on this list. <laughs> he done fucked up. Couldn't spell beach right. Put a fucking L in there like an idiot. Then only plays two games. Can't figure out why he doesn't score a point here for Tampa Bay, you dumb shit. Ryan McDonough, an excellent defensive defenseman. He changed your team on just being on there. He's a locker room leader in every sense of the word. Probably lean toward upper grade. Left. Mikhail Sergachev, he's the second best player on here. Is it his fault he's playing at the same time as Victor Hedman? Even better offensively than he is defensively, and he's solid in the defensive zone. And now we are deciding between Brewer, Hammerlick, McDonough. You already know which way I'm leaning. If you look at points per game, if you look at the assists, if you look at how many pucks he put in the in the net himself, you look at the all-star appearances, you look at the penalty minutes, you look at the direct impact that they made on the team and how big like that one individual player meant to that team. Roman Hammerlick has him beat in every possible thing that you could think of. Uh, and I mean, I know that sounds disrespectful for to Ryan McDonough, but that's just how good Roman Hammerlick was. So our left defense, Victor Hedman, Mikhail Sergachev, Roman Hammerlick. Let's finish off the defense, head on over to the right side here. This is going to be a while before we can get through all these names. Keep in mind, we can only take three of them. <laughs> Careful considerations between Dan Boyle, Pavel Kabina, Corey Sarge, Anton Strahlman. Like, I know we're going through and talking about each player. I already know which one I want to leave off the damn list. But Dan Boyle, 394 games, 253 points, 288 penalty minutes. Not known for his time in Tampa Bay, but probably the best actual all-around defenseman on here. I'd have him tiered as gray. The longest tenured of the right side for our choosing is Pavel Kabina. 662 games played, 243 points, so he could definitely score, but he is more known for his penalties and for his uh, rough play, 784 penalty minutes. But again, someone that also could produce on the offensive side as well. He'd be great for me as well. Uh, Corey Sarich is another stay-at-home defensive defenseman, one of the better ones at it. He is another great tier for me. Drop off. Anton Strong, not a bad defenseman, but comparatively speaking, he's a step behind the other three. I want to, no, I want to do right wing now. You do it? Want to do it now? Okay. Yeah. Are you sure? Yep. Positive? I am. We don't have to. I know. But we have Ryan Callahan. Fucking Dino Cicerelli again. Did, did, like, 
if he played for 25 teams in his career, he's going to end up on fucking 25 all-time teams. Motherfucker. <laughs> uh, Peter Klima. Some little bitch over there. Teddy Coastal. Oh. And Martin St. Louis. Uh, Ryan Callahan, again, another leadership guy. and A guy I think they really needed to get their cups in the last couple of years. Based off what we have here, he's probably great here. Ryan Dino Cicerelli, 111 games, 77 points. His lowest point per game total for any team. He's still a great tier for me. Peter Kleinma, really solid point producer for the, the relatively limited amount of games he played. But Dino's great. I feel like he's kind of got to be great. But Dino's- uh, I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about that slew foot and dirty son of a bitch and why he's going to be a blue one here, but I fucking hate the prick. Um, minus the antics of Nikita Kucherov and uh, some of the team gymnastics that the team did last year. In terms of skill, Nikita Kucherov is a really, really damn good hockey player. He which, is... Which makes his antics fucking worse. When you have skill that is elite where he's a t- he's a top three right winger in the league mm-hmm. like he he's just he's elite you do not have to play like a dirty fucking shit uh, teddy Purcell, 310 games 203 points unfortunately comes after we are talking about kuchero so i'm a little sour so he's white the most obvious one, someone that's in the face of the franchise discussion, Martin St. Louis. Okay, so we ha- now have Peter Klima, Dino Cicerelli, Ryan Callahan in discussion for the final two spots. Okay. I probably put uh, Klima number three. Um, Cicerelli making all made the All Star team. Uh, while he was there in Tampa Bay, which we are not going to get. Uh, from Ryan Callahan. Dino, three for three, buddy. One more spot left. The goaltenders, Ben Bishop, Nikolai Havibulin, Darren Pupa, Minovarium, Andre Vasilevsky. Ben Bishop, 227 games there. Uh, not a whole lot less than Vasilevsky. His 92-1 save percentage higher than Vasilevsky. His goal against a 228 lower than Vasilevsky. How the hell are we going to take Vasilevsky over Ben Bishop? Because Tampa Bay did. All right. Next well, up, speaking speaking of good goaltenders, the Bulin Wall, the Nikolai Bullen- Hobby Bulin, the the Stanley Cup goaltender winner of the. First cup run. Um, I'd have Nikolai Havi Bullen at a blue level. Because next yeah. up we have Darren Pupa. He was there early on in Tampa Bay, 206 games, a 905 save percentage, and a 268 GAA. The only reason I am not going to have him at a blue level, because motherfucker catches with his right hand. Never trust a goalie catches with his right. <laughs> no, Ray Yuma, are you kidding? Obviously a blue. She's the first woman to play in any major North American sport. Professional major North American sport. Talking baseball, basketball, football, hockey. No, Ray Yuma, fucking playing there. She is... Obviously obviously blue i mentioned uh why you're going to get somebody who's never played a regular season game making this list um she played in the exhibition games and a lot of people were saying it was uh just like a gimmick just even listening to people like brendan shanahan talk about that game and where he will recognize that you know i went in i really wasn't expecting a whole lot kind of thought she was going to get lit up quite a bit hoping that she wouldn't but uh firing shots i mean rockets they did not let up on her played very well very very deserving 
of the spot that she will get on this team. I get to follow this. So yeah. sorry, Vasilevsky. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna. I have to follow that. Andre Vasilevsky, uh, two-time Stanley Cup champion. That's good. Uh, Conn Smythe winner. That's good. Pads were quite large. That's interesting. Uh, in all seriousness, Andre Vasilevsky, the man picked that Tampa Bay handpicked over Ben Bishop when Ben Bishop was still dominant. Andre Vasilevsky has paid off that faith in spades for this team. Yes, he has a really good team in front of him. That is something to consider. But uh, when, already the, three when the team people. is struggling and they need somebody to turn it around for them, it's going to be Vasilevsky that gets it going every time. He, he steals. As good as they are, he steals games for them that they have no business winning. We have four blue, but I think we have the two that are going up. It's Vasilevsky and Ryan, right? Yeah, Our lineup here. All in the ties field. together, man. All ties together. You all tied together, man. We have Dave Anderchuk and Martin St. Louis playing on the wings with Vinny LeClavier. We have Ruslan Fedotenko and a bitch playing with Steven Stamkos. Brad Richards playing with Peter Kleiman, Alex Killorn, Rob Zaminer, Brian Bradley, Dino Cicerelli representing early 90s Tampa Bay in style. Over on defense, Victor Hedman and Pavel Kabina, Sergachev and Boyle, Roman Hammerlick and Corey Sarich. And at goalie, Andre Vasilevsky and Lenno Radio. I will have to have the correct information. 